Yesterday, an amazing story out of Whangarei. An amazing story from a 70-year-old guy who 18 years ago bought a quarry that the council, the district council in Whangarei, then shut down on spurious grounds. One suspects because someone in a position of influence didn't want any competition for their quarry. They said there was no resource consent. Actually, there was, but the council couldn't find it. A legal battle ensues, and after 18 years, um, the guy we talked to has a $6.1 million court fa- uh, judgment in his favour, which the Whangarei District Council refuses to play. It had destroyed his life, cost him his house, but he was still battling and he was still swinging. It was a great story. During the course of that story, someone mentioned a similar kind of story um, from down south. Um, involving the Southland District Council. And I did a little bit of research yesterday, and I love stories like this. I love it when the underdog wins, and I love it when we can show up petty, politically correct bureaucracy for the idiot or idiocy it is. So we are joined now um, from by Southland farmer and station owner Peter Chartres, who joins us on the line now. Peter, welcome to the platform. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, Sean. Thank you for having us. All right. Now, tell us where you farm. Tell us about this beautiful corner of the world that you're on. It's Tiana Down Station, which is approximately 30 kilometres towards Milford from Tiana, and it's um, dissected by the milford Tiana Highway which incidentally my grandfather in the early 1920s put the start of that road between Tiana and Tiana Downs. Wow. So your office is a pretty stunning place, right? It is. No, it's uh, a, a great scenic location yeah. and uh, a difficult property to farm, Yeah. With the, especially the higher rainfall, which is, um, leads us into the, uh, the regrowth of uh, vegetation, whether it's weeds or manuka. It's quite a high range. Okay, area. and to run a, a, a station like that, you've got to have grazing land, which means you've got to clear the scrub and, and the brush, right? Correct, and it does come back with a vengeance. And I imagine chartresses have been doing that for generations on Tiano Downs Station. Almost 100 years, Sean, and my son, my 31-year-old son, will be the fourth generation to farm here. So we're very passionate about this um, this property. Yeah, uh, and, and as well you should be and deserve to be. But about four years ago, I understand, you had a visit, was it from armed police and local government Correct. officials? And did they turn up yeah. unannounced? Correct. No, they did. My partner was here with three little uh, children and uh, I was already out on the farm. Uh, And we have a a, a radio here and she informed me that uh, what was happening. Uh, But no, a a real shock really. And um, I I can understand the, uh, the police if I was uh, uh, an aggressive person or had threatened them, but a little bit over the top. So the uh, arm, so, and they were armed, the police? Yes, it was uh, um, two days worth. The first day, uh, the police were armed, and the second day, the, the police chose not to be armed. Okay. So why were they on your property? What heinous crime were you suspected of having committed? <laughs> yeah, but look, uh, that's, uh, you would think it was uh, yeah, some criminal activity. Someone had died, you'd done a ram raid <laughs> yes. but on your no, letterbox? Look, uh, it, it just a, a search warrant um, for the council staff to try and um, get evidence to use against me um, for in, in a court to... Uh, basically um, oppose a, um, a court order to stop me clearance, uh, re-clearing uh, regrowth on the property. But um, 
the you know, the police armed with Glock and Taser and um, the you've got to remember So they were uh, searching uh, for evidence to say that somehow your scrub clearing was illegal. Correct. Why and would it be illegal if you've been doing it for hundreds of years? Well, that's what we thought. We thought that we were um, abiding by the, the rules mm -hmm. and if the, if the rules, uh, um, if we weren't covered with the rules, we had what is uh, an existing use right yeah, because yeah. of the, yeah. the time. Who, do, who dobbed, who dobbed you? Oh, I just, look, I'm sorry. We're already falling down a rabbit hole here. <laughs> but honestly, who was the wanker that dobbed you in? And why oh, would look you? At the, look at the series of them. <laughs> they hunt in packs. <laughs> um, look, I, I think um, a Facebook um, uh, video and comment by the then Minister of Conservation, Eugenie Sage, was not helpful. Um, but just the very fact that... Well, specifically about Tiana Downs, about your station. Correct. What did she uh, say? Oh, look, basically just saying um, how it was, uh, you know, with disbelief uh, what, what I was doing and trying to stir up... Had you been um, making a song and dance about your, your scrub clearance? No, not at all. We had, um, you know, we have had complaints um, over the years which have been investigated and found to be compliant. Uh, but Forrest and Bird, for example, um, oh. have been behind a lot of the complaints. Oh, so Twig and Tweet were on to you, and then you have the Minister of Conservation, so... Yes. Oh, jeez. So, so look, so they, they want to prosecute you for cutting down, I suppose, native vegetation, which well, is the manuka and other stuff. It, it's re-clearance of regrowth, yeah. um, which has got a, a lot of exotic weeds in it. For example, broom, um, Kentani aster, uh, Chilean firebush, you know, it's it's just it's not pristine forest. Yeah, yeah, I get you. It's it's not it's not it's not virgin forest. It's a flipping yeah, high country it, farm, Peter. Is what it is. With fences all through. Yeah. And <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and it's not it, part it, of the tourism estate or anything, is it? Or the conservation no. estate? Your land? It's freehold. Yes, it is. It's visible from the road. Yeah. Um, yeah. And. Okay, so Peter, that was four years ago. What's yes. happened in the four years since then? Um, basically, um, we had a meeting with some of the councillors. In fact, there were some good friends who were appalled by the uh, police involvement. Yeah. And we just said, especially when... You know, there's been two generations of this family fighting in world wars. Um, they just thought it was extremely over the top and distasteful to be treated like that. And we sought an assurance from the council that they would not treat other people like that. However, this actually, and the problem seemed to go away. However, May 2020, when DOC were actually dock contractors were clearing a boundary fence line between Tiana Down Station and uh, Department of Conservation land. Um, there was a complaint by someone there who went to a few different ministers, I think four different ministers, and thought it was me uh, because I had a, a, a temporary court order to stop me clearing regrowth. And uh, anyway, um, it, it wasn't me. And uh, what happened, it, it uh, motivated the council to, to uh, ramp things up yet again. And uh, it, it's with disbelief because, once again, it wasn't me clearing. It was a, a dock contractor clearing a fence line. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> So, Peter, in the end, you had to sue them to get them off your back, right? If we cut to the chase. <laughs> No, look, we, we tried everything from engaging with 
councillors yeah. uh, to um, actually trying to mediate uh, two lots of mediation mm -hmm. and to try and actually find um, a, a way forward. Yeah. Uh, and we tried everything to avoid going to court. Um, and, and that included a full ecological assessment of the entire property at, at my cost. Um, oh, wow. So um, SDC, Southern District Council, they walked out of the mediation um, and uh, they just said that they wanted more. I was, you know, trying to remediate. So you now have, where does this million dollar plus uh, judgment against them come from? It's, it's the cost. It, it's the cost of the actual case because um, when you're involving, um, you know, it's my costs and the council costs. Mm. Uh, so, so have it, you it, been it, awarded any cost or any payout from the council yet? That's underway at the moment, Sean. Okay. Um, Are they leaving you alone now to run your farm as you see fit within the the, the law as it stands? Look, uh, who knows, but what did come out of the uh, judgment was that they, they, they couldn't interpret their own rules. Yeah. Um, well, it sounds to me... Like, you got singled out as an example. I believe you're right. And if Eugenie Sage, the then minister, is making public comments about you, I reckon you were got to politically. They were saying, let's take a high country station and let's yes, scare look, the look. hell out of all the other high country stations on environmental yes, issues by saying you can't cut down your manuka, you can't clear. Let's get all the farmers and the farms off that land and we can all run around eating mung beans and wearing sandals. Look, I agree. The, uh, the Southern District plan, when they changed some of the rules between 2012 to 2017, that's, we, we're engaged with that to try and, you know, because they were changing the rules. Um, we have constantly tried to engage um, with them because of the unreasonable rules um, you know, which has been now proven to be misinterpreted yeah. uh, by the council planners. And so the court says they've Premier. got it wrong. Does the court say they have to pay you? That's before the courts at the moment. Okay, and when do you get a decision on that, um, Peter? Look, I'm not sure. I would hope before Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, Peter, what sort of toll? This is only four years, not like our friend up in Whangarei who was for eight, fighting for 18 years. <coughs> You've had four years what? since the armed police turned up to talk about you scrub clearing on your property. What sort of toll has it had? And I, look, I just imagine, Peter, you must be pretty pissed off. Oh, very... Uh, Agitated. Very angry. Well, it, it's, believe it or not, it, it's... It has a, quite an emotional toll because you can see how wrong it is because you know you, you're passionate about the property and you get go fluctuate between that to angry and then there's the, the pressure and stress from, you know, it, it's tough enough operating a station like this. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, the, there's a financial pressure and the mental pressure, um, but I'm just very thankful that, um, you know, we've stuck together and formed a, a, a good team of people, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's a good win for all farmers. Yeah, yeah, um, and I guess in many ways, if you were being made the example of, you're at the sharp end of the spear standing up to this sort of petty... Ridiculous bureaucracy, Peter. I'm very lucky to have had the support of good uh, friends, family, and staff, um, and you know, a, a good team of people, including um, uh, a, a couple of very good lawyers um, and a, a very good ecologist, because they could see how wrong this was. They, they so, Peter, you can head. clear regrowth on your farm now. 
without being at risk of the police arresting you. Yes. Good. That is good to hear. Um, Peter, what advice would you give to someone, not just a farming person, who comes up against this sort of bureaucratic bullying? And I think that's the only thing we can call it. It is bullying when the system sets out to get you. What's your advice to them in general? Look, I look at it through a farmer's eyes or lens, and I just think farmers especially have to stick together and we need better representation at a national, regional and district level because I I just think that um, if we don't learn to start to stand up for our rights, you know, people, farmers will wake up and discover that they don't have any rights anymore. Yeah, yeah, if you don't don't protect them, they go away. I guess the other thing too that peeves me in general, Peter, is... You know, I don't know, the greenies who sit in Wellington and sit their lattes in a Wellington cafe and go on the odd nature walk. Um, Farmers, to me, always seem closer, more uh, intimately invested in the environment and the health of the planet than almost any other group. You do, after all, live your entire lives and your economic lives dependent on nature working. I agree. And if we weren't passionate about what we were doing, we probably wouldn't last very long. We wouldn't be the hard yards when things get tough. Yeah, we have to learn to be resilient. Yeah, Peter, thank you so much for your time today. Really interesting story that I think that speaks to so much that is wrong in our society, but also how much reason we've got for optimism and hope, and I should really let you get back to what I'm sure is a... Is it a nice day down there? Is it stunning and picturesque? Not, not really, Sean. <laughs> right, no. <laughs> put the gummies and a hat on and get into it. Thanks, Peter. Lovely yeah. talking to you, mate. Thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Cheers. Peter Chartres, uh, farmer from... Um, Tiana Down Station, a four-year battle with the council, armed police and clearly the government to be allowed to clear Manukau and um, regrowth on his grazing land. Bloody crazy. Bloody crazy. Sean, a taste of things to come under co-governance. Maybe that's the problem. Sean, ask the farmer, uh, farmer if the police took his guns off him. Doug, I don't think they did, Doug. Sean, it's been great hearing Peter. Thanks for following up on that, says Sarah. Was it your idea yesterday? Sean, Peter comes across as so credible, unlike the council, as the court found, says Peter. Sean, imagine if the loony greens got real control in New Zealand. They love interfering in other people's lives. They hate farmers, and that's mental, says Ian. I'm with you on that, Ian.